GM, GM, everyone. We are just waiting for Cooper. Or we can get going, and he'll come join. You can't miss him. <laughs> All right, uh, GM, everyone. I am Matt Medved, co-founder, CEO, and editor-in-chief of NFT Now. This is NFT Music, the solution for independent artists. We have some incredible panelists. Uh, I'm really excited to get into it. Uh, why don't we start with just a brief round of introductions, and then we can get into the discussion. Sure, thanks, Matt. Hi everyone, I'm Shannon Herber. I'm the managing director of Aokiverse. Uh, we started as Steve Aoki's uh, original NFT project, and now we've turned into um, a whole uh, metaverse for music NFTs um, and moving into a white label system for uh, any artists and brands that are interested in starting their own uh, NFT project. Hi, I'm Kimberly Noller. I'm the CMO at Unpaired. I've spent the last uh, almost two decades in the music side on at major labels and also as an artist manager and now uh, exploring Web3 and how that's going to provide value to artists. Uh, hello everyone, bonjour. Uh, before to introduce me, I want to speak about you guys. I'm so happy to see so many people for this edition. I'm glad to see that uh, you're all here and uh, I feel very grateful to see so many people uh, starting to come in this stage. Compared to last year, it's a huge success, so thanks to everyone for being here. Um, I'm Agoria, so I'm mostly known for my music uh, first. I uh, did a uh, lot of albums through majors, like through Universal Virgin, but also independent labels, which is the theme um, of today. I run a festival named Nuit Sonor, a label Sapiens, and now I'm like more into um, experimenting. What I love about Web3 is we can experiment, so I do a lot of uh, biological generative art now, and I think we're going to discuss about all this thing later. Amazing. Cooper, give it, I'm doing a brief round of intros, so yeah, sorry give it up. Sorry for the late introduction there, but um, hey everyone, I'm Cooper. I work on a venture fund called Coop Records. I'm really excited about the future of tech and music, so I'm excited to be here with everyone today. Amazing, amazing. Well, give it up for our panelists. This is going to be great. <laughs> So let's, let's get into it. We'll, we'll do a, a, a question to the group. How is the music industry currently broken? And how do you see NFTs, Web3, this technology helping things? All right, I guess I'll start. <laughs> um, so I come from the management, uh, tour management side, and then also the labels. And so I think one of the ways that it's it's broken right now is the fact that it is so cost heavy to really create yourself as an artist to start with, and then also to try and become any kind of superstar. Right? The music industry has about a 95% failure rate. So back in you know the old days when we had actual physical product. It was the Lady Gagas and the Rolling Stones and the U2s that were keeping the lights on, right, for everyone else. But So what that meant is that if you never, as an artist, achieved some level of success, then you would have to continually pay back the record label for everything that they were putting forward, whether it was marketing or tour support, um, you know, the actual production of your vinyl or your CDs. Um, and so that meant that, you know, a lot of these label deals that were done were multi-album uh, label deals. So artists were often locked into essentially, you know, uh, pay for hire for these labels for multiple uh, albums. And then what you find is you end up with, you know, oh, okay, I get paid as an artist something like a dollar for every $20 that the label makes off of a vinyl album or a CD. Um, and so obviously, if you then have millions of dollars to recoup, what do you see back as an artist? Not a whole lot. So we ended up with no really uh, middle class for the artists. And we've continued that path now that we've gone digital. Because as I'm sure everyone here knows, you know, your artists now are getting 0 .0007, something like that, you know, cents on the dollar for every stream from a Spotify or a Pandora something like that. So because of that, what we end up with is, is essentially the same stratification that we have in real life, where you have people that are just struggling to get by, and then you have the superstars. So I think the reason that NFTs and digital collectibles and, and this whole new journey for us is really interesting is because it starts to help us create that middle class of artists again. I love that. I love that middle class of artists. And, and Shannon uh, really taps into... The, some of the major problems of the music industry has always really been a lot of what Yat just talked about. How are we getting creators paid? How are we getting artists paid? And even when they do have these huge, massive deals or they've created something and labels want to sign them, 
getting them paid and tracking the money and doing all these things that, that put money into the pockets of artists is still very difficult. And so when we, we talk about the value of what Web3 is gonna start bringing, it's some of the basic stuff that has yet to be solved in the music industry. And for an industry that has been around as long as it has, it has been primarily designed for the gatekeepers who are writing the checks. It's never really been designed for fans. It's never really been designed for creators. And so I think this huge shift in Web3 is gonna allow artists and creators to define for themselves what success is. And, um, and success is going to be maybe very different than having a top 10 single. It may be, oh, I have my 10,000 fans. I'm charging them $100. I'm putting a million dollars in my pocket. I'm not a million dollars unrecouped, so what's important to you? And so I think that's a massive opportunity for artists. So I think that's, there's a lot of value in that. I hope I will not, be, I will not have a lot of enemies today saying what I'm going to say. <laughs> um, I think the, since three years I'm saying the same, I don't believe much in music NFT as it's done today. For one major reason, is like the music industry already did this mainstream uh, acceptation by everyone. You know, like Spotify is 1,500,000 people listening it. So we already, the music is accessible everywhere. You have no problem to access to music. We did all this revolution since 100 years now. We don't need anymore an orchestra to come to your house to play a private set, so it's done. So the music NFT needs to be what is web free. It needs to be innovative, it needs to be something entertaining, it needs to speak about the mechanism. And I don't think it's come from the numbers. I don't think the numbers should be the reason why artists are going to step in Web3. We're going to step in Web3 as artists because we're going to have new ideas, new way of developing music, new way of creating music, new way of sharing music. This is what should be the lead for all what is um, uh, the energy of artists coming to Web3, but not about royalties, not about making money. If you have a good idea, if you have a good project, you will make money by itself. It's going to be organic. So there are a lot of mechanisms, a lot of way to make it happen. Um, I did, uh, like three years ago, maybe a player of audio generative, so it was for free. Every time you were listening to the track, you could listen another version of the track. Nobody will have the same version. Every time you press play, it's a new version of the song. That's just an example. There are tons of examples to make it happen for the music artists, the music industry, to do something creative. We, need, we are creative industries. Web3 is to, here to enable artists to make something relevant, new. Technology is here to help us for that. So um, I'm sure we're going to discuss later about this, but, um, and I don't want to monopolize too much the, the word here, but yeah, I think that's why I'm here for. Yeah, I mean, I would co-sign all of those opinions. I think for me, the music industry is broken because it's really hard for artists to get paid. And that's in the sense of getting artists paid in real time. If I stream your song on Spotify today, you're not going to see any money from that for four months. I don't think that makes a lot of sense. And I think if I'm trying to listen to your music and I want to get you paid, I should be able to do that in real time. I think for someone who's been a fan of music for a long time, if I love an artist or I love a song, there's not really a way for me to show that artist how much I care about them. You have Spotify wrapped once per, once per year where you say, hey, this guy's in my top 0.1%. But if I'm someone who's been you know, majorly affected by an artist in my life, I want to show them that. I want to get deeper involved in their community and I want to help out. And I believe the core thing that NFTs are good for is just getting involved in a community. You know, being able to say, hey, I really love this artist and here are the other people that love this artist. And so putting those people in the same room and getting them paid in real time, I think those are the two things that Web3 is really good about helping out with. Yeah, great points, great points. And speaking of community, you know, obviously it's a, it's a buzzword that gets used quite a bit in the, in the, in the Web3 space, but it is also the foundation of the value proposition here. Um, Shannon, I'd love to chat a little about Aokiverse uh, and, like, and a sort of a model for building a community around an artist like Steve Aoki, who's someone who has all these different verticals. He does so much in, right? He's, he's uh, hyperactive in that regard in, in a good way. You know, he's across fashion, across music, across events and, and all of that. How do you distill all of those things together into and build a community around uh, an artist like that and make it sort of like bigger than the brand. Yeah, yeah. cohesive, for yeah. sure. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, and you're right, thank you so much. I mean, it is easy, let's say, for us who work with someone like Steve, because he already was very into this world. You know, as most people know, he is a true degen himself. Um, and he also was into collectibles, which is essentially the basis of what, you know, the NFT and Web3 world is. So it was very easy for him to understand the value proposition of, oh, it's not just, you know, a, a pretty piece of art. This is a collectible that then also is, uh, it has intrinsic value of its own, it has tradable intrinsic value, but it also is the key to a membership club. And so what we've been able to do 
is through Discord and through the membership, really create this as a key that you then can purchase similarly to, let's say, a frequent flyer club, something like that, where the rewards and the verse part of the Aokiverse is less so about the metaverse and more about Steve's universe, right? So as an artist, one of the things that Cooper just pointed out, right, is that really, the money that you're deriving from your fans comes from about the top five to 10%. Those are your super fans. And so that's who you wanna serve because those folks identify with you, identify with your music, and are going to give you, you know, all the money. I mean, we actually just the other day were talking about what bands we're super fans of and how many times we've gone to see them play, right? So if you're able to collate all of those folks into, let's say, a platform like a Discord where you have access to those folks in real time, as Cooper was saying, Thing, uh, and you don't have to worry about an algorithm, so you're not losing them every week and trying to figure out, okay, how do I reach them, where am I showing up in their feed, and they have access to you, then they make it easy for you to create that value proposition. So I'm going to a show, maybe at this point I've been to 10 of his shows, well now, I can use that NFT, we can track every show that you've gone to, by the time you get to 10, maybe now you're an automatic VIP, maybe by the time you get to 20, we give you free tickets, by the time you get to 100, we give you free tickets for life, but that way we're making you a part of the community, and then you become our street team, because then you're proselytizing for us, because you're saying, oh my god, everything I wanted was community with the other fans, was community with the artist, and then as you grow in those levels, then you get closer and closer, you know, we've had um, some of our, our Whales uh, have done things like visited Steve's house, created a song with him uh, that will be released, and so now they're part owners and they actually have um, royalty rights in songs that Steve is going to release. So, you know, again, it's bringing him into the universe. If you're an artist that's okay with that, then that's amazing. I think the other thing you have to start thinking about, particularly for those of us on the business side, is that if you have an artist who isn't necessarily that okay with being that, like, in depth with their fans, it can be become a little bit harder, but you know your community better than anyone. And so once you get to know them uh, in the aggregate, then you can start to say, okay, what is worth it to you? What would be interesting to you? And as long as you listen and have that two-way conversation, then you know fans want to be a part of your system. So it's fairly easy to keep them going at that point. I love that. I love that. And the point you're making about the difference between being a fan and sort of a shareholder mm -hmm. and, and someone in, and being able to go from just being a fan to like an ambassador. Mm -hmm. It's a really powerful shift in perspective th that this technology enables. I love that. Um, Kimberly, we, were, had a, we had a great chat yesterday and, and you know, it feels, feels like you've been ahead of this curve for a long time in the music industry. Um, as you said, before getting into Web3, you ran the direct to fan at Warner, um, which is very much focused on this type of direct model. I would love to hear a little bit about that light bulb moment for you with Web3 and how like your experiences with direct to fan um, in the music industry sort of informs how you're looking at, at Web3 and also your current work. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think I feel very lucky that uh, some of these uh, terms that we're talking about in Web3 are just uh, reimagined terms from when I was uh, running fan clubs and getting and creating collectibles. They were physical and, and not digital. But the ethos is really the same, which is how do you create fan communities? And so, okay, we'll, we'll drop fan and we'll just call it communities. But it really is this idea of fandom and what is fandom. And I think what's really important, and it's kind of what the record companies missed and probably could have uh, been ahead of the curve themselves, um, and they're trying to catch up, they're always late, is that the, f you know, I always say it's, you have to be artist first and fan focused. And what I mean by that is that artists are the creators. We talk about creators, you heard that all the last couple days, but that's, that's the ultimate place you're starting from is that artists are creators. But the next place is there's a f there are fans, and those people are the ones that decide you're gonna be canceled, I'm going to support you, I'm going to collect everything that you put out. So these concepts that have been around for a while, now we have these tools. And I think what's really important about NFTs and the light bulb moment for me was all the times we were figuring out, how do we capture names at the show? No one signs up on you know email lists. Like there's such basic low level, low hanging fruit that for me when, you know, during the pandemic when, we were all doing nothing. I went down lots of rabbit holes and that's when somebody said, oh, you should check out NFTs and I 
quite honestly, was like, what the fuck? This is amazing. Um, and it was amazing because that relationship with the fans that you could never really own because keeping up email lists, which by the way, I still think is very important. Don't stop doing that. It's crucial. Um, there's this digital aspect. So if now I can put on a show and an artist has a show and fans show up and we can drop something in their wallet, like that starts to be a real relationship. And the other side of it is being able to reward and recognize those fans. So anything that it's around loyalty um, and fan thinking, like the NFTs are tools and it's more about what is that experience. The tool is the, the NFT, it's the tech. It's not about the tech, it's about the experience. And I think once we start really thinking about the experiences of how you can use the tech, because we do not talk about, uh, I'm going to go listen to my MP3, right? I'm just, we, we never talked about that. It was always about the music. So I think I answered your question. Yeah, no, great, great <laughs> points. No, no, absolutely, thank you. Uh, if I say a word on this topic. Please. Um, I think uh, the main thing is to be sincere and to be true. So if, I'm, if I may uh, stand yeah. up a minute. So Please. this is a Web2 conference, right? This is still a Web2 conference because I'm on stage and you're looking at me. But the Web3 is not this, actually. The Web3, you, st you start to come here with the community, you know, and you start to step in the community. You start to, okay, I'm trying to see what's going to happen. I'll try to be with you guys. And then what's going to happen is, okay, I'm going to sit with all of you, and I will be part of the community with all of you, because the Web3 is actually this. It's not, you are watching at me. Yeah, the Web3, oh, you might be one of my collectors, right? Um, <laughs> but the Web3 is actually this. Web3 is, we are all here together to make it happen. It's not about, it's not about get, getting money, it's not about getting, it's to have fun all together. We are here, we are decentralized, of course, I think you heard this word 200 times, but I think it's better, for example, if I sit on your, on your legs. <laughs> this is what is Web3, you know? So it's to be true and sincere. This is what it is, Web3, you know? Give it up for Agoria, everyone. That was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was the mic drop. I love that, I love Seriously. that. 100%. <laughs> one, one, and um, Agoria, I'd also love to chat, you know, I, I know that as an artist, as an artist, you know, it's been, it's been interesting following your career because prior to NFT Now, you know, I come from the music and media space. I founded Billboard Dance, I ran Spin Magazine, so I've been familiar with your music for a while. It was really cool to watch you enter the space. And I felt like one of the things that really characterized your, your output and your work was using this technology to do things that you couldn't do previously. Like actually doing something, like, like not just simply taking something that you could have done prior and putting it on the blockchain, but really like pushing the envelope at the intersection of music, generative art, and the like. I'd love to hear your perspective. Just how does this technology change the creative canvas for you as an artist? I think um, we're in a world where everything is available. Everyone wants to get more and more and more. It's a frenzy, more money, more experiences, more fun. It's a non-stop, it's endless quest. So the way free is actually for me the opposite. That's what I'm saying for every artist in music and every artist in general. Don't try to get the mainstream look at to touch more and more people. Try to be rare, try to be yourself, and people will come to you. So the technology, the tools, the AI, the if your coder, or even if you're not a coder, you can learn about this. You can even like, um, build a studio about this, be collaborative, meet people, meet scientists. I do a lot of work with scientists and I love this. You know, I learned so many things and I think we need this. I think honestly also the live experience as a DJ, or, you know, it's like 20 years I'm on stage. I love this, I love to share this, but it's the same. Why the fuck we still have like 2,000 people looking at us like God? We are not gods. Web3 will change this a lot. The ego of artists, the ego of everyone will be changed. We're gonna be in a post-ego period and I love that and we're gonna make all this happen together. That's why it's so collaborative. And like when I'm saying truth and sincere, it's like I have a Telegram, a WhatsApp group, a Twitter group with my collectors. We speak every day. Okay, it's take time. I agree, my wife sometimes is a bit, why are you answering this message at 1 a.m. on bed? Yeah, <laughs> yeah but uh, I don't know. I feel it's like, you know, this kind of group energy. So yeah, I think be collaborative, make experiments, lose, lost, um, make wrong choices, and then you will find a way. I think that's the, the main thing. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I love that. Uh, Cooper, you recently announced um, the launch of Coop Records, uh, your investment fund around Web3 Music. I'd love to hear your perspective on like, what, what is your investment thesis around the value of music NFTs, music in Web3, and the technologies that are being, that are being built to move forward? 
It's a great question. I mean, I would say simply we want to invest in the next generation of artists and platforms. You know, I think there's a lot of new technology being built. I think there's a lot of new playbooks on the table. And in the early ways that Spotify reinvented streaming and created this new network for music, I think something new is happening in Web3. And I think with Coop Records, we want to figure out what that is and be able to support those founders early in their journey. Very cool. Um, you know, one thing that's interesting is, I, I always tell this story was, you know, I grew up, my, my dad is a huge uh, Beatles fan. He's, uh, he collected rare Beatles memorabilia my entire upbringing. So the idea of collectability around music is something that always made sense to me and immediately clicked. It was Blau who actually got me into NFTs and uh, when, you know, that conversation, the light bulb just went off. Part of that is recognition, the idea that like, okay, maybe everyone can go listen to Abbey Road on Spotify, but not everyone has the signed vinyls, signed by all four Beatles, which now could also so potentially be your backstage pass, your access to exclusive merch, you know, the fan, the fandom experience. What I'm what I'm interested in too is in thinking about where we are. Or like collectability around music has made a lot of sense to me, but I th I feel like for the market there's still a long way to go. Um, and and one of the things that that I kind of an observation I had was that some of the use cases that really took off in the most recent bull run around around the space, um, there was a much greater there was sort of a better understanding among the public around the the value of collecting their physical counterparts. So for example, like the, the parallels with digital art to the physical art world, digital collectibles to the physical collectibles. With music, it's a little bit, it's a little more complex because we went from being able to buy, you know, $9.99 or to, to, excuse me, $15 to $20 to buy a CD to $9.99 for all the music in the world. And, and so for, for your average consumer, like the value prop of, of, of buying music, of collectability around music is still, is still for some of them it's not there. So I'm curious, like, what, like, where do we need to go? Like, what steps do we need to take for Web3 music to go mainstream? A hit song. <laughs> I mean, I'm just, I'm just being honest. Like, I mean, we talk about this all the time. I'm super bullish on this space, but I do think that you, there, there's two things. It goes back to what I said earlier about defining what success is for you, because you can be successful with your 10,000 fans at $100 a pop, put a million dollars in your pocket, you can be successful as that. But I, I am of the thought that to be a global superstar with the amount of money and time and investment, not just as an artist, to be creative, right? You still have to be creative. So I'm a big believer in the craft of songwriting and the craft of musicianship and all of that. But I think I am waiting for that Web3 artist that has the song, that's put the team around them. How did they afford to put the team around them? Because they launched an NFT and they put that money in their pocket and they hired the guy to go to radio if they had, if that's their choice, right? You do not have to do that or they toured. So I do think what's gonna differentiate it and it's gonna go mainstream, it's going to be a song we all wanna hear. Look at, at, at the history of music. You built it on the road, you built it touring, you built a fan base because people showed up and bought your tickets, but if you really want that mainstream adoption, you have to have a hit. So people can <laughs> challenge me all day on that. Great points, great points. I'd love to hear everyone's perspective on this one. I think uh, as an artist, and I guess the only way to the success is if people are going to resonate with what you offer. Is people going to resonate with your song, with your performance, with what you're saying, your narrative? They need to resonate with something. It might be very, um, it might be technical, it might be just incredibly technically difficult to achieve, so people are going to resonate with this. But you know, for example, when you go to a show, why is you still go to a show and why you prefer to go to a show than listen on Spotify? It's because you don't know what's going to happen. And the way free is this, is the fact that you are unpredictable. And the fact to be unpredictable makes it relevant. So if you go to a show, this is what's going to happen. Will uh, Tom York sing perfectly tonight? Will the guitarist going to have a problem with his chord? Um, we go for that. And who are we going to meet? So we need to resonate with this. And I think the music industry needs um, to step in Web3 with the same idea of how the collectors, how the people are going to resonate with the project. Love that, love that. Uh, Cooper, love to hear yours. Yeah, I think we just need a lot more music on chain. You know, I really echo what you said about Web3 needs hits, and I think that we're obviously optimistic that there's gonna be an artist who comes out and has a viral song that starts as a collectible, but I think the reality is there's hundreds of years of music that people have already known and love, and you can't collect any of that. So I think in the same way that we're thinking about the future moving forward, you know, I see collecting music as collecting memories. If it's a song that you have association with, you have an emotional attachment with, 
That's the reason why you'd want to collect it. And I think right now we're making the assumption that people want to come and discover these brand new artists that started in Web3. But the reality is most people already know the artists that they love. You know, they've been listening to these people for years. And so I think a big focus for me this year is not only thinking about how do we develop and break emerging artists, but also how do we bring in artists that have hit catalogs and make them feel excited about allowing their fans to collect? Because I think that's where the next generation of collectors is going to come from, as people who have already followed these artists for years and now want to start to unlock this new behavior. Just one second. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> That's a, a great segue, because I was going to say, um, this is a moment where we do actually need to talk about the tech. Uh, as much as we don't like talking about the tech, because nobody cares, well, okay, maybe you're a car fan and you do actually care about the engine, uh, I care about the seat and the steering wheel, <laughs> because that makes me comfortable. And so, if we're talking about the catalogs of these artists, we have to start making them a little bit more Web 2.5. We have to get the tech under the hood. It has to get to a place where they maybe don't even know that they have necessarily an NFT, they just know that they've gotten all of these rewards, or you know they own a bit of the song, or whatever you know method you're using. But it's very, very easy because if to go back to your point, you know your dad is a Beatles fan, as am I. I have a lot of you know boxes of things in my house uh, that are physical collectibles. But um, maybe your dad, much like mine, is is never going to jump into this world, right? If you said to my dad, "Dad, do you want an NFT of the Rolling Stones?" He'd be like, "What the fuck's an NFT?" But if you said, "Dad, do you want a key to like the membership club for for the Rolling Stones so that you got automatic VIP the next time you went?" He'd be like, "Fuck yeah, I want that." Okay, great. Well, here's how we do that. Give me your email address. And that's it. That's all he has to do because he's not going to go any further. So if we start talking about legacy artists that have catalogs that millions of people already know and love, this is where we need the tech to get a little bit better because without it, we're never going to onboard folks who aren't as web savvy as we are. 100%. I also think there's a vernacular as well, right? Because I think we've made it very complicated for some reason. Um, we, because now I feel like I'm, I'm part of this community, um, but it, we've made it very. Oh, well, thank you, you are. <laughs> we've made it very complicated, right? And to Shannon's point, like, uh, and I love this whole idea of legacy because I, a light, I did have a light bulb moment, you know. And Shannon comes from that that background of, of catalog, but I think that is a huge opportunity for mainstream to really start to adopt the technology on that for that reason. But how do you then take create this sort of vernacular and create that connection because that's really what it comes down to, right? Is, is how is somebody who does love the Beatles and loves the Rolling Stones and maybe they just figured out how to do streaming and are not playing their, their vinyl, like now we're asking to say, wait a minute, I know you have that signed vinyl, but now we want you to collect something different. And so the simplicity of it, that, that's what we're missing in the space, I think. It's just not simple. It should be simple. And some of the most successful projects recently have been simple. They haven't called things wallets. They've called them vaults or, you know, collectibles. So simple, Simon. I think I, I like the fact of collecting memories. Yeah. Uh, we just experienced a few, few shows, and, and I will do this a lot this summer. We do what we call live minting, which means you go to a show, and at any moment of the show, if you like the visual, if you like the audio, you can mint this moment, and you have on this blockchain the memory, your proof of attendance, your proof of uh, being a fan of whatever. And also it's a good thing because in a way, you don't need anymore your phone always to keep this memory for you. You mint it, it's minted for you in amazing quality, and, and it's yours, and it's get the degree of rarity, temperature of the room, how many people were at the show. You know, you can do many things with live minting. There are a few experiments at the moment that we are doing, which might also connect the fans, you know, live to the artist. Yeah, for sure. I saw actually Proof of People did this with Richie Houghton last year, and it was amazing. And it definitely is, you know, kind of goes along with like what we were talking about in terms of the collectibles and the knowing that you were there first and the OGs and then being able to reward people for that. And then the artists also having that data, which they've never been able to have before because it's always been kept either via, you know, Ticketmaster or Live Nation or whatnot. So this, exactly what you said, goes back to, you know, minting the memories right in the moment. I love that. And I think NFT ticket is one of the best use case for NFT music. And I think we need NFT tickets because no second mark, no, no black market, you're sick, you can re resell it, you can find someone. That's As right, an artist, you can chain. do the ticket, you know. There is the guys of Billy here, they are good for that. I mean, it's a very good uh, thing to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely, we've got just under a minute left, so why don't we do a quick little lightning round. Um, what is one thing that, that uh, those who are listening should be paying attention to in Web3 music? Well, something that excites you, something you find interesting. Uh, it could be anything, it could be an artist, any a use case, all the above. I'm going to say it. AI, 
I'm in. I think it's going to be super creative for artists. I think we're going to have to put some guard walls around it, but I think it's going to be an incredibly creative time for art and music, and we'll see how it goes. Mm -hmm. um, speaking about AI, maybe I can say a word about this. Um, if you imagine a camera, a film, this is the eye of the visible, your camera. AI is simply the eye of the invisible. So with this, you can really capture all your cosmic ideas. I would say I'm excited about uh, just the next generation of artists that are out there. You know, spend some time on Sound XYZ, spend some time on Spinamp, discover music that you enjoy. I'm gonna give a quick shout out to uh, NFT Now and their Now Pass, which was just announced yesterday. Woo! You guys wanna stay up to date? <laughs> With everything that's coming at the next generation of music, I mean, there's no better place to get started. So just thankful to be here today. Appreciate that. Thank you, Cooper. Uh, I am really excited about legacy artists. We're actually going to start to work with one, um, and we're, we're going to release their Web 2.5 uh, fan club in March, so I'm not going to give away who it is, but that idea of onboarding legacy acts uh, is really exciting to me. I, like Kimberly mentioned, like Cooper mentioned, I do come from the world of, of catalog, and so uh, for me, working with my heroes has always you know, brought out the fan in me, and so I literally cannot wait to continue to work with legacy acts so that we can actually continue to give them money for the work that they've done for years that they haven't been paid for uh, and hopefully onboard a whole new generation of artists who don't have to uh, recoup anything don't have to sell their master rights and have ownership of all of their work from the very beginning yeah there it is mic drop moment we are over time give it up for our panelists